Alright guys, um, so I had a ton of footage of uh, putting this whole building up and um, it just ended up being way too much for uh, how I was originally editing videos on my phone and uh, it was just too much to even transfer to my phone to sort out and edit and um, so then I just kept recording more and more stuff and uh, never edited anything never put any videos out so this footage is from I think June or July I don't remember um, and uh, you know here it is January oh no February it's February 1st and I'm finally uh, trying to finish something and uh, but anyway um, uh, I also got a new computer and uh, that was part of why I waited so long to uh, edit anything and um, uh, you know just trying to learn this new computer trying to learn this new program that is way more difficult than I thought it was going to be uh, but anywho uh, here we are we're uh, starting to sort out the beams and get them you know they're already kind of laid out on the ground uh, so we could identify them they had stickers on them that said what they were and they also had a uh, pink marker on them that said uh, you know they match the the drawings on the beam, or you know, match the blueprints. Uh, the label, everything to say what it was. Um, so we get the the four main beams out, and we uh, we go ahead and stand those up, and then we start uh, working our way out from there. Kind of putting we put the four main beams up, then we uh, build the first roof truss. We uh, start putting wall uh, girts on, and then. Uh, once we get those done, I think we, I can't remember if we started putting uh, roof purlings on or not, but I'll do some more voiceover as we get further into the video. But um, anyway, uh, so you know, here we are we're putting putting them on. I got uh, some good help. Uh, nobody's done one of these before, uh, so it was, well, this is a first for pretty much all of us. Um, my two neighbors, they. Uh, they came over and helped the the one older gentleman you were seeing in the picture a minute ago, and uh, and his son, uh, which isn't over here yet. Um, they've done one of these um, similar building years ago, but they've only done the one. And uh, anyway, uh, so that uh, that was the, the help. You know, some of the help I got there is uh, my buddy uh, Skippy and uh, Kyle and my dad and then the one neighbor Ed and uh, his son Ronnie comes over and helps later on he was out I think he was out doing some estimates or something that day um, anyway we stay in the building up uh, or start standing the uprights up and uh, work our way around everything uh, everything went really well um, you know the um, everything was marked properly the blueprints were uh, for the most part pretty easy to figure out um, we uh, you know there's a few things um, because we haven't you know I've followed blueprints blueprints for um, you know working on on uh, residential stuff and some commercial ha you know buildings and stuff for like build outs but I've never um, looked at prints for like an iron erection like this where uh, you know so there's a few things I just wasn't 100% sure about um, but uh, it was easy enough to figure it out um, you know we made a few mistakes here and there but it was just because we you know it was one of those you didn't know so you you didn't know uh, but here this is one of the roof trusses we're laying that out on the ground um, we get both you know both sides laid out and then we uh, bolt them together uh, and uh, and then eventually we'll stand you know in a few minutes we'll stand it up and uh, put it in place and then start putting the uh, wall girts and stuff on and start uh, I think we do the cross bracing on the one side just to kind of uh, sturdy everything up so it, it doesn't potentially fall over I don't think it would ever fall over just uh, but stuff's too heavy and uh, too expensive to take any chances on so uh, we were trying to be as cautious as we could um, but I'll uh, 
I'll let this kind of play out for a little while and then I'll come back. Uh, there's Ronnie. Uh, he's over there now too. Uh, but, uh, you know, everything lined up really well. But I'll let this kind of play out for a little while and then I'll, I'll chime back in in, in a few minutes when uh, we move on to something else. Or if I think of something uh, that was worth noting. talk about things as we go and and as I'm thinking of things seeing different stuff I'll uh, you know I'll try to uh, talk about some of the, the uh, you know issues we had or not issues so much but uh, just things that we um, encountered as we were doing it uh, you know stuff that we didn't know before you know never knew we were doing it like um, you know we found out uh, when we were doing the roof truss or not roof trusses the um, roof purlins that when we did the center section um, that we should have done um, a line all, like we should have done the row all the way across the building starting at the back wall working our way forward because the um, the end ones that so you know it's broke down the wall the looking at the side of the building like we're looking at now it's you know the center 20 foot bay and then there's two 20 foot bays on each each end of it we should have started with the far end behind us um because the center bay overlaps or the end bays bolt to the center bay uh the roof um purlins do and the uh, they share the same bolt holes as the center bay. Um, we didn't know that at first, so we put all the center ones on, um, you know, to kind of make that center structure sturdy. And uh, and then when we got doing the next sections, you know, the end sections, we realized now we have to take all these bolts back out and uh, try to lace, you know, line three sets of holes up. Um, at one time to uh, to get them back in, and it, you know, being on the that slope, you know, it was um, wasn't as easy to do with one person there, and uh, you know, on the lift at that at that center section, you know, because they were trying to work two pieces at the same time, um, you know, just. If we had known, it would have been a little easier to do it differently. Um, you know, another thing that would have made things a little easier is if um, United Rentals, when they sent out the two scissor lifts, they're both supposed to be 20 foot lifts and uh, or 19 foot lifts, and uh, the brand new one worked amazing. Uh, that the older one, uh, I forgot what what kind it was now. Um, it was a piece of shit. Uh, it was it, only one wheel would power it, um, you know, so it was like one wheel drive. So any imperfection in the concrete and it was, uh, it would just sit there and spin tires because it was, you know, so rigid. Uh, and it would only go, uh, um, the deck height would only go just a touch over 15 foot. Um, it would never go to the full, its full height. Um, I'm not sure what was stopping it from doing that, but. Uh, you know, it was Saturday and Sunday, so United was closed anyway. So it's not like I could call them and say, hey, uh, send me out another lift because they weren't open. Um, so, and that was another thing. You see, I got scissor lifts from United and uh, the telehandler from Sunbelt. I reserved all three machines online at, with United and uh, like two two or three two days three days before uh, they called me and said that they didn't have the telehandler available um, and I was basically SOL I had to pay it was almost a thousand dollars more than what I was originally gonna rent to get this um, one from Sunbelt um, to be delivered in time um, for the window that I needed the only place that had it was like an hour away so it was like an extra charge for them to bring it down and uh, I was kind of irritated about all that but 
it ended up being a really nice machine to use. Uh, you can see right now, I'm, or one of the guys is hanging off the back of that um, that Micro 19 um, because it's probably new. It was probably a great machine, but um, the one we got was in terrible condition. It uh, the wheels were wore out on it. The only one drive motor worked, and uh, like I said, it wouldn't go above. Uh, like 15 foot four or something I can't remember what it was now it's been too long but um, I'm trying to think of some of the other things that we had problems with um, you know I, I second guessed myself the whole time when we were doing the concrete work or getting you know setting the forms for the concrete to put my anchor bolts and stuff where they needed to be and um, I uh, you know I made those little metal plates to uh, keep the bolts square while um, you know while they're pouring the concrete that way they would you know there wasn't they weren't out of shape you know drilling holes in plywood isn't that accurate uh, we're having these uh, sheet metal plates that were uh, you know that I cut out uh, and, and drilled them all so they were uh, the right size um, for the anchor bolts uh, proved to be good and I actually followed the you know putting the anchor bolts exactly where the plans called for we had zero issues dropping every column we dropped down dropped straight over all the bolts um, we didn't have to bend any we didn't have to you know cut any off and redrill them or do anything like that everything lined up perfect um, which I mean I guess that's patting myself on the back uh, but I was stressed out so bad for days over that uh, that I was gonna get it wrong um, but it worked out perfect um, same thing with the rest of the building I mean that's a I guess it's a, so that you know um, I don't know the word I'm looking for but to the quality of the kit it's uh, I mean everything lined up you know we're setting those anchor you know the anchor bolts in the right spot uh, everything else dropped together like it was supposed to. Um, you know, I mean, we had to use the spud wrenches to uh, to align some holes here and there, but that was more or less um, twisting or wiggling something into position to get all four bolts in the hole. You know, in the holes in the plates. Not, you know, we could every one of them, the, every piece that we put up. I think we could drop one bolt in right away. Uh, you know, and I've watched videos where guys are putting come-alongs on and big ratchet straps and using tractors to push beams around to to get them to line up and I mean we didn't have any of those kind of issues I mean it it went together really smooth compared to some of the videos I've watched of guys putting these buildings together um, you know so it went together really nice uh, I'm super happy with the kit like I can't wait for uh, for y'all to see the next videos and you know following this one where the building's act you know because the building's done now um I'm like while i'm editing this one finally um i'm actually all the permits are, you know not permits the um all the inspections are done uh the groundwork's all done uh you know the driveway's finished um you know i passed all my inspections um the um the only thing I'm still waiting on is the door. That should be um, another two weeks. Um, and right now I'm actually currently working on um, building a mezzanine in the back, uh, 12 foot of it. Uh, so I've got a video that I'm working on now. The video for the mezzanine um, or loft, whatever y'all want to call it. Um, it uh, so far, I've got um, the inside walls framed up for, or down on the bottom level, uh, framed up so I can put plywood up. And um, I uh, have all the beams cut and ready to go as of right now. And um, have all the posts cut and notched and ready to be put up. And um, actually, tomorrow morning when I get up, I'm going to. Uh, run the last few electrical boxes that I want to add 
on the lower level walls so that way uh, I can start hanging plywood hopefully uh, Friday um, and then uh, once I put the plywood up I can start uh, putting the beams and posts up and start framing up the floor which I'm really looking forward to I can't wait to see what that looks like in there but um, I don't know, it's back to this video, what we're actually doing, you know, watching right now. Um, for some reason, I never, I didn't get all of it in order. Um, but, uh, you know, none of us um, had ever really done any kind of rigging like this or, uh, you know, building a building like this. And, um, you know, heck, myself, I've never run a telehandler other than the day that I had one, you know, the day that I rented one to um, unload the whole building off the, the tractor trailer. Uh, that was my first time ever using one. And, uh, you know, this day right here was my second time. And, you know, so not only am I nervous and stressed out about making sure the building goes upright, but I'm also trying to make sure I don't, I don't hurt anybody because... I didn't do something right, uh, you know, swinging these heavy beams around. I mean, you could definitely hurt somebody. Uh, so, you know, I was trying to be responsible for everybody here. You can see we got the the uh, back wall laid out, trying to figure out how we were going to do it. And we ended up just standing those ones up by hand because they're just C-channel. Uh, it was easy enough to do those. I can't remember. Uh, we'll, obviously, we'll see it in a few seconds. Um, I think we stood the uh, the center ones up by hand also. Um, they were a little, probably a little heavier than we should have handled, but um, I still think we did it. I, I can't remember. Uh, we'll see in just a few minutes. I was wrong. I guess we decided to use the uh, the telehandler to do it and just boom out to uh, to stand them up. I couldn't remember. It's been so long. We had, and there was so much going on putting this building up that uh, you know I honestly don't remember all of it until I see it again. Um, yeah, I think we we're having a few issues on trying to figure out where to set the rigging for that. And apparently I didn't keep recording there anyway uh, there's that wall up uh, you can see there we're putting the um, like where the center sections we did the trusses in one piece um, with these end walls we decided to do them the tr the upper truss or whatever you want to call it uh, in two separate pieces because it has to drop into uh, the top like it's got a plate that drops down inside of those two C channel or the 4C channel um, you know uprights on the wall and uh, trying to line I, we figured that trying to line four of those up at the same time was just going to be a nightmare to get them to all go down where they needed to be um, and that it was easy enough just to do one side you know so we don't have to line two plates up and then do the other side, line those two plates up, and then uh, wiggle the center into place, and uh, put the I think it was six bolts in the center to bolt the two two together. That's uh, I think it's Skippy up there doing it now. Um, you know, I couldn't have done any of this without the help from all these guys that came out and helped. Um, you know, they probably saved me thirty thousand dollars helping me put this building up myself. Um, you know, if I had to pay a contractor to do this, I'm guessing, you know, I didn't get any quotes on it, but I'm from talking to different people, I'm guessing it could have been anywhere from twenty to $40,000 to pay somebody to do all the work we have done uh, or ended up doing. So, you know, I'm more than thankful for these guys. 
Um, yeah, the videos are definitely out of order. But. talking about earlier you see how in this clip you can see all the we put all the um, roof purlings in and uh, later on when we go to add the uh, the rest of them in on the you know like I said in the front and back bays uh, we have to undo all those connections we did um, at the top um, just to get them, you know, to get them because they they use the same bolts. So we didn't realize that they, because the the center ones run long, you know, they run past the 20 foot section. So we assume that the side wall, or not the side walls, but the end walls, those roof purlins would bolt to the 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 tails, I guess, that stuck out past the the mounting plates that were welded to the I beams. But in that you know in actuality they overlapped just like the wall ones do and all that but um i think the wall ones overlapped too and we had to uh rebolt you know use the same bolts for those two i can't remember now um the one thing that we did that you know, I guess makes sense is like each one of the I beams has a welded flange to bolt the uh, wall girt to, and the same thing with the roof purlins um, has four holes in it. Um, you would assume you fill the holes. You know, you put a bolt in every hole. Um, when I got to putting the little there's some uh, you might we might see it later at the very end where I'm putting these little like angle iron cross braces that go from the um, center roof trusses out to the roof purlins uh, just to kind of like add some extra stabilization there um, I ran out of bolts and I was there was a couple other things I was curious about that it, to make sure we did right before we started putting the sheet metal on um that i you know so then i called the the salesman that uh i ordered the building from and uh he told me that um the the welded plates on the walls instead of putting four bolts in um the four holes there i should have put two bolts in them and it on diagonals from each other and then where the wall girts overlap the the tails on those where they overlap at the far end I should have put one bolt on each end of those too um, he said putting all the bolts in there like 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 I had done um, could potentially make it too stiff of a building and not let it flex at all uh, I don't know how true that is or isn't. Uh, I'm not an engineer and I don't think he is either. Uh, so, you know, I don't know. Um, I'm not saying it's not true and I'm not saying it is. Uh, that's just what he said and, you know, it kind of makes sense. Um, kind of doesn't either. You would have thought it would have been noted on the, the plans if it was, if it called, you know, if it called for a specific uh, bolting pattern or something um, but you know whatever um, yeah, these are definitely way out of order um, you know talking about running out of bolts um, in actual actuality if I had done it the way he said I would have had a sufficient number of bolts and after I 
um, adjusted a few things and removed some bolts from certain places and moved them to other locations like he said I ended up having enough bolts to do what I needed uh, but talking about supplies and, and stuff that were sent um, you know uh, I've still got boxes of screws left over uh, I have uh, you know boxes of the the I don't know what kind of the like uh, little gummy tape that you put on the the sealant that you put on the roofing panels and stuff where you put the ridge ridge cap on and at the bottom of the panels and stuff to seal them up like the, the actual seal for it uh, you know they gave us more than enough of, you know more than enough of that kind of stuff so that way uh, if you know, if we messed stuff up, we had extras like the foam closure strips. Uh, I actually have a giant trash bag full of, I don't remember which ones it is, inside closure strips or out, outside closure, I don't remember. Because they, they give you two different kinds, insides and outsides. Um, one of them we were actually short a few pieces uh, to close the bottoms. Um, but, uh, you know, the other we had. 10 times too many uh, and then um, like the clear silicone they gave for doing the gutters and the the uh, you know sealing that kind of stuff up you know they gave us you know just a couple extra tubes of that stuff and um, you know all the trim like everything was made really well um, the only thing I can say out of the whole kit that I think I wasn't really pleased with the quality of was the very center um, uh, it's like the center trim piece that goes like the ridge cap or not ridge cap um, it's the decorative cap that has their name tag on it it um, it just wasn't cut to the right profiles to fit um, to fit the trim properly now maybe that was because I didn't line the trim up perfect to uh, to get you know to put it on in the first place um, I don't know um, I'll tell you one thing oh that was another thing we did have a problem with um, you know I've seen some of these buildings that have like a continuous ridge vent or like a um, a piece of trim that screws on over top of the um, the the roof metal um, and uh, you know it's just like a piece of metal that's been bent on a break uh, and then it gets the you know that sealant tape on it and, and screw down uh, this didn't have that this had what which I thought was really cool was um, you know these uh, stamped pieces of uh, ridge cap that were um, you know the same width as the roof panels and they were the same um, contours and stuff as as the ridge or as the roof panels uh, but one side of them seemed like it was a tighter profile than the other side and it didn't matter which direction I turned turn them they just fought me all the way down the ridge putting the uh, trying to get them to line up um, you know I thought maybe we put the roof on you know on out of square from each other or something like that but it really wasn't it was um, the, the way the the um, things seemed like they were bent the the corrugation I guess if, you, if that's what you want to call it, corrugation was tighter on one side of the roof on those pre-bent uh, ridge caps than it was on the other side. So it made it where they wanted to twist. If you screwed the wrong side, if you screwed one side down, the, the tighter side down first, it was, you couldn't line anything up. Like it would make you run downhill on the, on the roof and uh, it was just a real pain to line those up. So after 
uh, while messing with them, I figured out the trick to screwing down one, a certain, you know, putting them all a certain direction, screwing down one corner, and then almost stepping on them and kind of smashing them down to spread the corrugation out a little bit, and then getting another screw on that same side, and then almost kind of kicking them into place on the other side to get to get them to lay down flat on the roof. Uh, you know, uh, it looks perfect now, but it was a pain in the ass to put up. Um, I, uh, I really did fight it, um, putting it up. Um, but regardless, uh, I'm sure I'll talk about, um, some of the sheet metal stuff, um, when I do the next video which will be putting the insulation up in the sheet metal but um you know as much as I fought those ridge caps uh you know once I figured out the method to do it um you know it worked out all right um and they're you know they're all sealed up and I don't have to worry about anything leaking um you know some of the screws because I was fighting it um uh, I just didn't, you know, I didn't really care for the angle that they were at or, um, not so much angle, but it just didn't, I wasn't sure about them. They were probably sealed up fine and, and everything, but there was a few, um, few screws that I didn't even want to take a chance on questioning. I, uh, I just went ahead and uh, put a little bit of clear silicone around the outside of them too, just to make sure that, uh, they never leak. Um, back to what you just saw a second ago with me standing up on the, on the handrails of the lift uh, you can see our problem with having the, the one scissor lift that wouldn't go up high enough um, I had to get up on there and stand on top of the rails on the middle section of the rails so I could reach the top because I didn't want to put um, you know, I, didn't want have, I didn't want anybody else that I had helping me doing something that I wouldn't do um, and you know I don't think anybody else was comfortable doing that um, but uh, this is um, the next day it's just uh, well, actually we've done I think this was um, we did a Saturday and Sunday and then I think this is Monday me and my dad are finishing up the last little section of uh, um, Perlins, and then putting up the the end corner or the outside corner trim like you can see us loading up on the lifts now um, or I guess Eve trim Eve something I don't know um, but you can see I'm just going back and checking you know I was looking at the drawings trying to make sure that uh, I was in fact grabbing the right piece and putting it in the right position and, you know everything wanted to make sure everything was right I didn't want to have to redo anything um, you know, I wanted to make sure it was right when we were doing it so that's what I did um, So you can see, like the the, I see how easy those. You know, I could just throw the bolts right in it, uh, and um, because we were having, you know, like I said, we had to um, we had to take the bolts back out of the center section. We uh, worked up a method to do it by, with one person easily with um, a couple C-clamps, or not C-clamps, but like the squeeze clamps. And uh, we put a clamp on the I-beam in front of it, that way it wouldn't slide down the beam at you. And uh, you can undo the center one, pull all four bolts out of it, and then um, I could put my side of the beam up, put the four, my four bolts in, and then um, the person in the center, which does, at this time was my dad, um, he could take the spud wrench and wiggle it in there and, and put uh, 
get all four bolts to um, to you know start back in it again and uh, and put those four bolts back in. Um, Oh, here's uh, putting those cables in. These ones on the on the end walls. I wasn't really a big fan of the way they go. They uh, and maybe maybe we were supposed to drill holes in the in the wall girts, but there's nothing in any kind of instruction or anything that says to do that. Um, and I've seen pictures of other people that did theirs the same way we did ours. Um, but you know, it has these. Um, kind of like solid solid strand uh, cables there's a backing plate that goes on these c-channel ones because the, they're not as thick and then there's like a an alignment cam not really an alignment cam I don't know what to call it what the proper word is for it uh, I move it was moving too fast to show it but um, it has a little like nub that stops it from walking up the hole or out of the hole but it basically lets the bolt tighten up on an angle so it's um, anyway we didn't show enough of it to really explain it better but um, you know they all they all everything went together great um, you know, I mean, we were using the impacts and stuff to, to tighten everything up um, oh, this is when I was trying to uh, look up the the uh, manual on this lift to see if I could um, change any kind of mode or or do something with it. It was just kind of while I was waiting um, to move on to the next piece, um, but it wouldn't work. Yes, yeah, so yes, I was measuring it just to see where it was at. Um, you know, there's just. I couldn't find anything online or in the manual to to change the mode that it was in or or get it to give me those last few feet which didn't matter I didn't need it anymore anyway other than for the next step we do is uh, painting the the framework um, but that's not in this video um, here you can see it's pretty much all done the only thing uh, we're putting the cables up um, you know, we got them all in and then kind of tighten them up just a little bit. Um, you know, we didn't put a ton of tension on them, just enough to uh, uh, have them all taut. Like, everything that we put up was, you know, we put levels on everything to make sure it was level before we moved to the next piece. But uh, everything was pretty level and square. We didn't have a whole lot of... Like, like I said earlier, uh, we didn't have to fight it like a lot of people had done in their videos where they're, you know, talking about hooking come-alongs on and that kind of stuff. Like, we just didn't fight it like that. Um, we had good luck with it, I guess. Um, yeah, so when we put these... Um, these, uh, I guess those are, these are more for the wind load. Um, uh, when we're putting those on, they, you know, they all, uh, you know, we just tighten them up just enough to, uh, to actually have them tight, but not pulling on the building a whole lot. I mean, you know, we didn't, we weren't trying to, because you can change the, uh, some, a couple of them we uh, snugged up a little more than the, another one just to uh, square things up just a, a little bit better. Uh, but for the most part we didn't have to do a ton of, ton of that kind of stuff because everything um, like I said was pretty square like everything worked off of a great foundation um, you know getting all those bolts in the concrete in the right spot and having the concrete level and, and all that um, made the, putting this building together um, you know fairly easy uh, it went together uh, 
great, I think. I'm super happy with this building. Um, I'm glad I picked the company I did to order it from, you know, Maverick Steel Buildings. They, uh, they build a really nice building. Well, they didn't, well, they manufacture a really nice building. Um, I guess I, technically I built the building. Um, but I'm, I'm super happy with it. Like, it's so close to being done. Um, I can't wait to, you know, have years and years and years of use out of it. Um, I get excited seeing it every day when I pull, pull in the driveway. Like, it, it makes me happy seeing something like this. I never thought I'd have. Well, I know, uh, this build, you know, this video is probably, uh, pretty boring and I probably repeated myself a ton on different things, but, uh, this one's wrapped up about now and, uh, you know, like, comment, share. If you got any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, you know, the next one's hopefully it will be a little more put together now that I'm figuring out this um, editing program slightly um, but you know it'll get better as I get as I get a little few more in uh, this one just had too many too much I just had too many videos or video clips and stuff that I needed to try to put together and I was tired of wasting time um, doing it so I just wanted to slap something together to get this out to show y'all process um you know 